All right. Hey, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, this is Bryce from Whitmix. I'm joined by Evan Kemper. Uh, most of you know us by now, so I don't know that any introduction is needed. Most of you are probably tired of hearing from us by now, but <laughs> alas, here we are. So, ta-da! So today we're going to be doing another webinar. Um, this week we're really focusing on um, like basically copy mill restorations. So um, let's see. On Monday we did um, we did a, a single unit in a bridge, uh, basically copy mill. Today we're going to be doing a little. Uh, uh, we're going to be getting a little bit more intricate. So we're going to be doing uh, basically an all on four copy mill today. Yep. Um, Evan's going to be walking us through that. You can see he's showing it on his screen. Um, before we jump into it, I do want to say uh, we are streaming live uh, both on Facebook and on uh, Zoom. So uh, if you're watching, awesome. Glad you're here. Thank you for tuning in uh, with us today. And these are being recorded. So if you want to go back and watch this, uh, you can do so either on Facebook, on our Whitmix uh, uh, profile, uh, or you can also find it on our website at whitmix.com. Uh, either way, uh, and they are free. So uh, yeah, feel free to check those out at your leisure. Um, so without any further ado, uh, I'm gonna hand over the reins now to Evan Kemper, who is our applications engineer. And uh, we're gonna start talking about the process for copying and all on four. Evan? All right, thanks Bryce. Um... Yeah, so today, uh, if you joined us on Monday, you saw how easy it is to just copy mill individual crowns and a standard uh, prep supported bridge. Um, pretty easy. Uh, so now we're going to be talking about copy milling a um, implant bridge, which is not that much more um, involved, but there are a couple extra things you need. Um, and uh, basically, I mean, what you're going to need that's extra is you're going to need a, a scan body kit. Um, now, you might ask, like, why do I need that? Why can't I just scan both sides and uh, marry it up? Well, one, uh, typically, uh, if this is a been a provisional, even if it um, had, let's say, the screw lip in the design, um, or if you had tie bases cemented in there, uh, which you can see on this, their tie base is cemented in. And so if we scan that right now, um, we're not going to, if we, and then mill it in, say, zirconia, the tie bases aren't going to fit. So that's why we got to go back and basically, in a similar workflow to what we did Monday, we're going to uh, scan it in like we're doing a normal implant case um, and kind of a, and combining it with the wax up uh, scanning workflow. And then we're going to go in and section around the areas where we want it to basically put the CAD um, interface for these tie bases back on there. Um, or in the case of like, like, like I mentioned, if it was like a PMMA provisional and you had the screw lip in there and you're trying to go to now zirconia with a metal insert that has the screw retention in it. So um, that's the main reason that you need the extra stuff. Um, uh, so it's a little different than just like a bridge or a denture where you don't, you don't have that interface you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, the case we're doing today is a, a nice demo case that Bryce did. Um, so half of it is going to be full contour. The other half is a thimble bridge. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, it will just pretend it's all a finished bridge. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the order form. And this is an upper. And we're going to go pick the teeth where the implants are coming through. And it's not super important on this um, where you're just copy milling. Uh, whereas if you use three shape to do a um, just kind of from the ground up all on four design, then you kind of need to want to pick a tooth location that's close, you think, to where that uh, tooth in your design is going to be because the implant has to actually interface with a, a tooth. It can't just go straight through tissue. Um, so then we're going to go to abutment. And you can see here we have wax up abutment. So we're going to pick that. Um, you can also use this uh, if you like to wax up on UCLA abutments for doing custom abutment. You can do this and just do a single. Um, but today we're going to go in and we're using um, true abutments all on T, I believe is what they call it. Um, let's see. Do it this way. There we go. All on T. And so um, 
I believe probably in the temporary selection, that's going to have uh, the screw lip in there. So if this, if you were designing the provisional, you'd probably pick that. So you don't have to buy tie bases uh, for the provisional. And then all these other options are just the cement gap between the tie base and um, the design. And this is actually something really nice that they've done that I haven't seen in almost any other one where they actually give you different options for the cement gap. Um, and I'm sure any of you who've done uh, any kind of uh, hybrid work, especially when it comes to the engaging hybrids. Um, and if you're doing different manufacturers, there's a lot of variance between how much some give you for cement space and uh, others sometimes. Hey, uh, hey, Evan, real quick, your, sh mm -hmm. your screen share is not on. Oh, <laughs> oh, great. Uh, it's, helpful. Go. it's helpful. Yeah. So we're going to do a little repeating here, but Oh, come on. Sorry, I didn't notice it earlier. It's my bad. Yeah, I should have noticed it. All right. Now you should be able to see it. Luckily, there wasn't too much we talked about that actually was on the screen at that point. So uh, just recapping what I actually did was opened the order form and then selected my teeth and then clicked abutment and then wax up abutment. And then what we were talking about with um, true abutment, they have a option here for temporary, which is going to put the screw retention in the actual design. So you don't need a tie base, but that would be like if you're milling it in PMMA, not really recommended for the final uh, restoration or uh, prosthetic. The These other two options or other uh, eight options are either a shorter long uh, tie base and then giving you a variable cement gap, which is nice because a lot of companies don't offer that kind of an option. It's all just one option that's set. So I'm just going to pick 30 micron short. Um, and then the next thing I have to do is bridge these together. So that's basically just how I set up the, the wax up bridge from Monday, except this time it's on implant or abutments rather than uh, preps. Um, I'm going to leave the antagonist off, one, because I don't have it, and two, if you're copy milling, you're usually copying some adjustments to the occlusion that's been made, and you want to, you're wanting to keep it exactly the way it is. Um, so I shouldn't need the antagonist, but you could add it if you wanted to. And I'm just going to click OK. And then we'll open up the scanning software. Yeah, I will say I really love using true abutment. Um, any anybody that uh, has ever like trained with me or anything like that, I'm I'm a big proponent. Um, I really like their products. Uh, they've got good customer service and they um, all around uh, pretty solid company. So uh, if anybody's looking for a a good uh, implant manufacturer, I really I really do like true abutment. They're uh, they're pretty great. All right, so all I'm doing now is making sure that the um, implant bridge or provisional, and that this could be if you waxed up a uh, um, case uh, and wanted to just take that wax up for your initial design um, into a provisional and put it on implants, you could do the same thing. Um, also, if you want to convert a denture, which uh, last week we covered, if you want to convert a denture, to a uh, implant supported version of that denture, then this would be the same thing you do here. Um, but at, at the step we're on now, either the bridge needs to be on the model securely or the denture or the wax up um, and whatever it is needs to be on the model. Cause this is our alignment scan. That's gonna give it the relationship between the model, which will later scan without it to get the implant locations and the actual uh, thing we're trying to copy. So then we'll go ahead and put it on a plate and just like anything else and put it in the scanner. Now we'll see, uh, I may have to spray the zirconia side of this because it does, it is glazed and polished. So it may be a little too reflective to get a good uh, scan. And actually I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it now before we do the the actual detailed scan.
So just added a little scan spray to kind of mat that surface. And we're just going to do the whole arch. Um, another thing to do, I'm not going to do it on this, but uh, I would, uh, in, at least in the wax up scan, plug the um, screw holes on the occlusal side, um, just because you'll have to sculpt that in. I mean, uh, if the software, if you're doing a non-angled screw holes, it should punch right through in those locations. But um, if you were maybe going to move the screw hole somewhere else, you'd want to kind of fill that in. Yeah, I like to use... Um... I like to use Teflon, like put a little bit of Teflon tape and then cover it with wax. Yeah. If you, if you use just wax, a lot of times it'll kind of clog up your screw a little bit. So now we'll just trim this. And go next. So now we're going to go ahead and take this off. All right, so now it's off. We just have the model. Now this is actually a model that has had multi-unit abutments designed on it. So that's what we're on, what, what we're actually going to be scanning to. Um, but the, it's the same process as if you were scanning straight at the um, implant level, except uh, you would be using an implant level scan body. Uh, in this case, I'm using an abutment level scan body, which you probably won't be able to see on my screen. Maybe I'll find a picture of it to show later but it actually is just a little conical connection that goes directly to the um, multi-unit abutment, which I have up here on true abutment site. So rather than, you can see, rather than going to the implant level, we've designed custom multi-unit abutments, and then we're going to the abutment level here. here. So you just have to make sure you have the right scan body. And so what I'm gonna do, since I just have one, is I need to do use one abutment. So it's going to procedurally walk me um, through the scanning. Now, it, and um, weeks ago, I'm not sure which week it was when we were doing some other uh, implant stuff, we talked about uh, if you have to do this, then you need to make sure you don't move the model on the plate. And um, that's really important because it, it doesn't rescan or it's basically using each the absolute position of the model to make sure these are staying aligned so if you move the model on the plate while you're moving these abutments then you can have an issue now three shape actually makes a special plate for that and i'm going to run real quick and get it uh Sweet. it's going to take me two seconds i gotta put this little mask on though right don't worry buddy i'll hold down the fort um one thing you can also do if you don't want to buy this fixture um you can use hot glue, honestly. Um, you could just hot glue it to one of the regular scanning plates. Um, the fixture that Evan's about to show you actually is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Some of the three, three shape fixtures, I'm like, mm, you know, you probably don't need to spend money on it. Um, but this, the implant model fixture is actually pretty sweet. Yep. Uh, if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy any of the three shape fixtures and you do like full arch um, implant restorations, this is probably a good one to pick up. Yeah. So, if you can see the way this thing works, it's got a little first a, a front stop and then a slide right here that butts up against the back of your model. And then you turn this little knob right here and that actually tightens it down and it kind of wedges the back. So it, there's no way the model moves. Um, I'm not gonna actually use it today because uh, the multi units that you know not engaging and not as likely to catch or anything when I'm taking them out but um but yeah this is a nice little plate and you can use it on non implant cases too uh, if you are having issues with like maybe a heavy models staying on the blue tack you can just clamp them with this um So 
I'm just going to go ahead and screw into this into three. So we got first one in. Actually, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to click rescan here. So uh, by default, this scan gingival mask is on because typically you've got, you know, you're, you're going to have sub gingival uh, interfaces. Um, but these multi unit ones are bringing it more tissue level. Um, so I don't really need to, I do have a soft tissue I could remove, but I don't really need to do that to get better, yeah. like a better scan of the, ana or the scan body because it's all well above tissue at this point. If you were um, doing so like like implant off. level, yeah. If you're doing like yeah. implant about or implant level scanning, you would definitely want to do that. But on yeah, because you're going to get level, your tissue emergence. Uh, you know, you're going to want that, so you would want to scan the, the tissue. But here, I'm not doing that because we already did the uh, multi-unit abutment part. So, yep. and that's just going to save me a scan step that's not really necessary at this point. And now I'll just go forward. And so now it's telling me on the left over here to select the abutment scan area for two, three. So I'm just gonna select enough that I, they'll connect together. So we're gonna say next. Now it's gonna tell me to do six. So right there, next. And finally 14. Now, because I did turn off the tissue scan, I want to make sure I've got everything I want highlighted in this scan. If I'm going to make any adjustments to the tissue level or anything uh, yeah. on the um, prosthetic, then I need to make sure I have the tissue here. Otherwise, it's not going to be in the scan. So now it's telling me to make sure that it is in 2.3. So it's already there. And I'm going to click Next. If this were an E4, it'd be done already. Yeah. Maybe not that fast, but they're super fast. Yeah, probably would. Yeah. It also, it also probably fling that model out of the scanner and whack you in the head. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a good time to use the implant fixture. <laughs> So now you can see it's not processing the scan yet. It's waiting till I get through all four um, scan body locations. So it, you can see over by the model, it's telling me to move the analog to six. So here's where I want to be careful not to move the model. You want to hear a funny story? Go for it. So the first time I ever did the, the use one scan, the, like use the one abutment option, when I got here, I didn't see that the text over there changed on the instructions. And I sat yep. here waiting for it to post process for like an hour. I'm like, why isn't it doing anything? <laughs> yeah. Time ago. When I was just, but a three shape fledgling. Yep. I'm sure everybody's had some, some kind of thing like that. Yeah. Just waiting on user input. <laughs> Yep. And now I need to move it again.
and again that clamping plate is handy because if you get through you know three out of four of these or you know six out of eight if you're doing an all on eight or something then or uh, then you're starting over so um yeah, nothing worse than getting to the last one and like accidentally shifting the model a little bit and then you have to start all over. Yep. Yeah, it's not cool. And we'll do the final move with our fingers crossed that we don't move the model. Check the Facebook and see, uh, check. <laughs> Check the Facebook. Check Facebook and uh, see if we have any questions here. All right. Right quick. Um, man, I've got a song stuck in my head and I cannot get it out. Starlight by Muse. You ever hear, <laughs> you ever heard that song? It's been a while. Yeah. Man, it's stuck in my head. Like crazy. All right, I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any questions on Facebook so far. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to feel free to get those in. Much smaller crowd today, so uh, we can talk about anything you guys want. Anything in the world, we can talk about. So there we have our tissue and abutment alignment scan. And now we're going to do our alignment of the multi-unit abutments. Is there a... And so it's just going to progress in the same order that it did before. And we're going to check the alignment up here and it looks good. All right, so all those alignments are good. And these align really easily because you're not worried about like a certain key index or anything. It's just position. Mm -hmm. Bam. And so there's the alignment scan. And as long as it looks like it's aligned well, then we're good there. And now we're going to proceed to actually doing the scan of the um, implant bridge. And you can see again on the screen, this is an accessory, the wax up bridge scanning fixture. If you weren't with us on Monday, it's just a spring loaded, basically a clamp and these little wires, the uh, or that filament, as long as you don't put scan spray on it, the scanner won't see it. Um, and so it just lets you get both sides. You don't need this. They have introduced a feature where you can use the, um, use blue tack. Uh, and that's what we'll do today. The blue tack requires basically two different scans. This will do it all in one scan. Um, but it, when you get to bigger stuff, I think this would fit, um, but with the zirconia on it, it could get a little heavy uh, and may want to fall out or move in this. So we're just going to use blue tack. So let's see, just take the model off here. And we're just going to do down at the bottom, we're going to check scan on blue tack and we're going to go ahead and put the bridge on. I'll try not to rub off my scan powder so that I don't need to respray it. Might need that a little bit right here. And the other thing I'll do real quick is just put like a little bit of blue tack 
over that screw hole on these just to cover it up and mess up rice is really nice. Yes. Example case. Sweet. It's what I always wanted. I figured as much. piece would be kind of fun to spray the uh, fixture just to see what it looks like it'd be kind of cool yeah I'm sure somebody's done it somebody's had to have done that I'm sure there's a lot of people that like to play with the scanner yeah. Okay, so you can see it's a little blurry. Let me see if I can get it to focus on that a little better. Uh, there you can see the little blue spot. So that's where I filled in that screw hole. Um, then I just go ahead and scan the top side. So now we're going to examine it, make sure everything on the occlusal side is nice and detailed the way we want it. Now it looks good. So then we're going to trim it. Um, and if you were this Monday, I like to use the line mode on this just because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control on placement. And so I'm just going to go almost all the way to the blue tack, but um, avoid anywhere where I think that the scanner has made approximations or um, closed holes so nothing mm -hmm. on the underside we're going to get that in the next scan and actually before we go to the next step there's a spot right here that is not bridged. So I wanna go ahead and see if we can clean that up by going back to scan and doing a detailed adaptive scanning. Yeah. So you can see that red, it had actually closed a hole there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just highlight that area with, for adaptive scanning. And let's just see if there's any other stuff in red. So these spots right here are probably where I'd accidentally rubbed off some of that um, scan spray but i'm not too worried about that you can sculpt it and it actually followed the contour pretty well but you know in this case that's definitely not supposed to be there now if you of course if you're doing a full contour bridge you wouldn't really have that issue but just to show you that adaptive scanning it's going to go back and figure out where the hole is and then try and uh, based off that figure out how it needs to position the model to be able to see into that spot 
So you can see it adding the data in green. And I believe that's going to do it for us. Doesn't look like it's bridging that in anymore. Yep. And we'll just confirm that our trim is still good. So it looks like it reset that, which doesn't surprise me since I changed the, the input scan. So we're just going to quickly trim it again. That's a little lesson in evaluating your scan before you move forward. <laughs> totally intentional. All right. So now we are ready to move forward. I'll just go to next. Now it's going to tell me to flip the bridge. So I'm going to do that. And now I've put it right on here. And just to keep it from putting holes in the scan around those interfaces, since there are titanium bases in it, I'm going to spray them a little bit too. Um, just because we do have to have it connect in those areas. And if there's a hole, it may cause problems down the road. There's a hole in the scan. And just put that in. Okay, that bottom scan looks good. So we're just gonna move to trim and I'll trim it. I'm gonna go a little bit higher than where I was marking it before. But again, we wanna not include anything where the scanner is making a basically a educated guess at what the surface should be. We just want yep. a true surface. Um, Only good data. Yep. You should be, you should be data exclusive in your trimming yes. process. All data is not created equal. It is not. There we go. And we go next. So now we're going to do our alignment. Let's see. We'll go to where the contouring has been added. So. There we go. Good alignment. We can see that marbling between the two scan colors. Um, now, if say there was like a section where you trimmed it too much and there's a hole, we'd want to go back and reduce the trimming on one side or the other because we want to be able to have a hole uh, or a, a complete watertight um, STL for the best chance of not running into errors later on. Mm -hmm. And so there we have the two combined halves and then we're just going to align that to the implant model. And that looks like a good alignment to me. If you look we'll at that. Next. And now we have the tissue and our bridge with the implant locations, everything we need to be able to um, basically, we've copied everything, um, you know, any adjustments, any changes. And now we're just going to re um, basically recut the uh, places for the tie bases and the screw holes and that's and then make any minor tweaks if we want in the um, design software yep so
So how long, I mean, let's say, you know, you're not doing this in an instructional setting. Mm -hmm. Realistically, I mean, how long on average would it take you to scan that in? Five minutes, maybe? Oh, yeah, probably less than that. I mean, I'd say yeah. five minutes on the old scanners, not even the, like the E-series, yeah. but like the, the older D, hunt, D uh, 7, 8, 900 ones. Um, yeah. The multi-line scanners are just way faster than those. Um, yeah. But yeah, and well, and if you if it's not a big issue to invest in multiple scan bodies, like buying a scan body kit where you usually end up with three to five of each different one, mm -hmm. then really you fast. just screw all those on and boom, you do all that in one scan. And yeah. uh, one, there's less chance that you accidentally mess something up going that route. Um, and two, it's just faster. But yeah. there is the added cost of... Um, yeah, but you know, like you go, like like with Truba, I and mean, I think their scan bodies are only like twenty five bucks. Yeah, like they're they're pretty darn cheap. Honestly, if you're going to be doing a lot of these, it's probably worth it to just invest in a, you yeah. know, a whole set for each platform, just mm -hmm. so you have them. So here I'm just setting the occlusal plane. Uh, when we're just copy milling and we're not going to have like the opposing arch in where we think we might be making additional adjustments to the occlusion. If we're truly just going to copy mill what we have, then you don't really need to worry about setting this. Um, if I wanted to, I could sculpt on the scan. Um, but again, unless you're going to be adjusting the uh, tissue side of this, then you don't really need to be spending time sculpting on the scan. We're basically all we're going to be doing from here is cutting the interface and screw holes in. So we're just gonna give it the annotations it needs. So I'm just clicking near these sites since I can't actually click in the hole. And there you go, we've got the um, tie bases uh, that we're, are gonna be cemented in. And if we wanna see, we can see where our bridge is. If we hide the actual scan and the, let's see if it'll let me hide the tissue part, nope. Um, but you would see that they line up, you know, in those holes. Um, insertion direction, again, I'm not worrying about that because all we're doing is the, having it readapt to these tie bases. <clears throat> all right, so if you were with us Monday, this should look familiar. <clears throat> I'm basically going to go between the uh, different numbered uh, implant locations and revise the cutout line. We should see that in, oh, it's on six right now. Let's actually go to three. One thing I've never understood is why it always goes out of order on that, but it doesn't really matter. You just got to pay attention to which tooth it's asking you to. Mark. So you can see it way down in there. Let's hide the abutments. Maybe we'll see it better. <clears throat> but what we're trying to do, this cutout line, we're going to relieve any of this scan where we don't want it to consider that. So we, we don't want any of the pre existing interface, essentially, because this is where it's going to reattach to that tie base. I'd say it's probably pretty good. Now we're going to click next. And of course, it took us to 14 for some reason. Why not? Yeah, keeps your day interesting, I guess. Keep you on your toes, buddy. Yep. And we'll just click on the next tooth, which is apparently six. Now let's say like it's doing some funky stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is just um, reinitialize the active cut. And start in a different spot, trying to get it to move where I want it.
Alright, so we'll do smaller movements because it's wanting to uh, not quite move it the way I'm wanting it to go. Let's just see. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's just clear that's fine. We're just going to draw it. Why is it acting so funny? Probably has something to do with how the mesh was triangulated, but yeah. And it's confusing it some normals happen. or something, but there could even be some holes in it that you can't see. Yeah. So if you're spending too much time fussing with it like I was, <laughs> then just go ahead and zoom in enough that you can right click on the line. And then just right click and hit clear spline and it'll let you draw it. Um, and now we'll go to, and part of it, it looks like it's identified it on the top side right on the bottom. So actually I'm just gonna clear that and draw it instead of messing with it. All right, and if before you move on, you can hit check cut splines and that should analyze them and tell you if there's any issues with how they've been drawn. Uh, it doesn't have any problem with what I've done. So we'll just go next. And you can see it's now placed the CAD interface for the um, tie base in there with the appropriate cement gap. So now I have a, the full sculpt toolkit over on the left that I'd have in anything else in three shape where I could actually go in and let's say we're gonna smooth around these wax or where I plug those holes. No, we do have a, we do have a question come in, Evan. Um, mm -hmm. And this, uh, this person asks, is, uh, is there any option here to make a cutback for the anterior if I'm copying a full contour bridge? So um, no, and, and the, just copying the wax up, um, essentially it's just a one for one copy. And then you would have to actually come in and if you wanted to, you'd have to actually sculpt a facial cut back here. Mm -hmm. um, but the, if you were gonna do go that route, the best way to do it, um, which, well, I shouldn't say the best way, uh, it'd be nice if we could just say, come in here and all right, let's cut these areas back, um, but you can't do that. So the other option would be to, instead of doing a, the copy mill workflow, would be to scan in that arch as a diagnostic wax up. Um, mm -hmm. And then you, and set it up like you're designing from scratch. You'll morph your tooth anatomy into the, the wax up. You can't morph the yeah. tissue, so you'd have to redesign the tissue. Um, but then if you set it up as anatomic, um, copings yeah. then you have the ability to cut back the facials yeah. um so it's not going to be as smooth a workflow but it'll still work yeah so you really would just have to decide do i want to cut it back you know if you can you could use a hand piece you know if this is pma and cut it back where you want it and then scan it and then you're doing a you know copy mill at that point or oh. you scan it in and um as a diagnostic and because really, essentially, at that point, if you're going from full contour to a facial cutback, it's not really a copy mill. The whole idea yeah. behind the copy mill is all you're basically you're wanting to take either a provisional or um, a wax up and convert it to something that without having to redesign it. So taking yeah. it to zirconia or um, yeah, or changing say from the screw retention being part of the PMA to a tie interface for zirconia. 
Um, so we just smoothed that out a little bit. Um, if you wanted to, you could recarve anatomy. You have the, all the, the toolkits that you would have on, anywhere else in, in 3Shape. All right. And then we'll go next. And that'll take us to the assembly. Now here, it's telling us like uh, we're below the minimum thickness of 0.6 by three millimeters. That's just a, a false positive. This thing's solid. So uh, it, it probably has something to do with where the screw hole's coming through, maybe on one of these uh, uh, prepped teeth. But I'm just gonna say yes to continue. Um, so now, and you can actually see if I were to hold this bridge back up where you can see it. These were all vertical screw holes in the design. And if you can see where the little blue dots are, they're basically in the exact same spot as what's on the screen. So whenever Bryce did this, that, that's um, the using the um, multi-unit abutments allows you to change the screw hole location for the final provisional without actually using an angled screw hole in it. So um, now yeah, the way true going, does it is actually pretty sweet. So they, they basically use an attachment kit. So you basically just design like a bar profile for your abutment and then you add an attachment. Um, and it, it's, it's a pretty solid system. Works really well, honestly. Yeah. You have a ton of freedom this way. Maybe that's something that we'll, we'll do one on in the future. Yeah. Actually, I think we might be doing that might already be on the schedule. I'll have to check. Yeah, I think it is next um, week. So in this case, I, unless I wanted to move the screw holes again, which I don't, um, they're fine where they are, then I would, uh, uh, if I wanted to, I could check it, use angled screw hole and then make an adjustment to the angulation like that. Um, but really, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And... Then we we'll click next. The red cylinders are where the screw holes are. And right now it's just calculating the final. It's fine. And if we generate our cam output, then we have our STL. If I open that up, there is my copy mill that I would then take hey. on the milling machine. That's sweet. So, you know, it's pretty it's easy. Really, really, yeah, it's really not as complicated as people seem to think. I know anytime you start to get into full arch anything, a lot of people are intimidated by it. Yeah. And because, you know, it's, you're talking about a very, very expensive restoration. There's yeah. a lot of, no pun intended, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Hopefully there's no moving parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it, it, it's easy to overthink it and get intimidated, but it's, you know, when you, when you actually see someone do it, it's like, Oh, that's really, you know, it's, there's nothing to it. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. No, no, nope, it's actually pretty straightforward. I mean, really, yeah. again, if you weren't with us Monday, um, the only difference was that we had to use implant analogs, but it's a really easy process. And, you know, like we were talking about earlier, if you weren't sitting there explaining it to somebody, I mean, you could be through the whole conversion in under 10 minutes, I would say, unless you had a whole lot of yeah, implants or you had to do them one at a time. Yep. Um, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let me check um, and see if we have any. Okay, no open questions on Zoom. Let me check. Um, let me check Facebook here real quick and see if right. we have anything. While you're doing that, we'll see what's on Friday's schedule. 
No comments or questions. Man, everyone is quiet today. Super quiet. All right. So it looks like Friday we're going to be doing denture. how to do a copy denture. So this nice. is a feature, yeah, that was added in the last version of 2019. Um, but they actually, you can copy a denture and not only um, just copy it, but you can actually section back out the teeth so that they can be printed as separate parts. Yep. And I, from what I've heard from 3Shape, they, they've improved it even more in 2020. Some of the algorithms and sectioning and stuff like that, they've, they've improved quite a bit. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a really cool one. So anybody that's watching this, uh, it is a different workflow. So it's different. Yeah. It's a different module than what we just did. So uh, if you're interested in it and, and you, you've never done it before, I recommend checking it out because it is, it is a little bit different. Um, and so that'll be, that'll be on Friday, same time, uh, noon Eastern. Uh, we'll be doing that live. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, just to recap, uh, this is recorded. So you can go back and watch it for free anytime. Um, and share it with anybody that you'd like to share it with, preferably. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Um, but uh, if nobody has any questions, man, you guys are super quiet today. Um, yeah, nothing on Facebook. Um, you know, I guess we'll I guess we'll call it a wrap. Uh, Evan, do you have anything else? No, no. It's uh, pretty <laughs> pretty simple. Not a whole lot to add to this process. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you hope you tune in uh, with us on Friday as we go through copy denture. And I hope everybody until then uh, has a great, uh, a great couple of days here. Uh, stay productive, stay safe. Uh, and we will talk to everyone on Friday. Bye. Yep. Bye.